Thank you very much, Dr. Raisa, for this uh, enlightening speech. Uh, it's uh, about intelligence. So our future is intelligent. Uh, so please allow me to call for the roundtable uh, discussion. So uh, Ms. Mr. Carlos uh, from uh, uh, Director uh, responsible for international cooperation, DG Connect European Commission, Belgium. And Mr. Anian uh, Fergehaas, uh, Program Manager, DG Connect European Commission, Belgium. Uh, Mr. Fahad uh, Al Husni, uh, Director of Research Administration, TRC, uh, Oman. And we have Dr. Abdullah Al Zabi, General Director for the Scientific Research uh, Support Fund, Jordan. Uh, so please allow me to welcome our uh, roundtable uh, delegates. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon. This is a session about uh, the future of uh, international cooperation in research and innovation, how to make it work for the uh, region. So we have uh, our friends here representing the uh, Jordan and Oman and uh, the European Commission, uh, CGNAT, which is very much in, uh, focused on research and education uh, and uh, helping the communities in the rest of the world to, uh, for innovation and research. So please, uh, uh, Mr. Carlos, if you would like to do the Let me address uh, uh, my, my expression of, of uh, uh, joy for having the chance of being here and present uh, what we are doing in terms of ICT research innovation and especially enhancing and further developing the cooperation with the rest of the world and more specifically with the uh, Arab countries, which in our view are a very important group uh, that we would like to bring closer to uh, the cooperation with us because there is a, a very strong uh, presence historically of Arab uh, communities in Europe even uh, from uh, let's say more than 1000 years. I think that I can already move on. Okay, my, my just uh, a little word about myself. I work uh, in the Commission and uh, I'm responsible for doing the coordination of international cooperation uh, in the context of ICT research and innovation. Let me just say two or three words about Horizon 2020, reinforcing the message that was given this morning by Ambassador Kulaf. We are talking about probably the largest research innovation program in the world. We're talking not only about 80 billion, which is the money that is pu being put directly into this, but actually probably three or four times this amount because a lot of these activities are being leveraged with additional private investment through a number of public-private partnerships. Another important feature is the fact that we are targeting not only EU member states, but we are actually looking at enlarging this cooperation to countries around the world, and in this context, Arab countries play a very important role. Uh, the value of our program will be measured very much by our ability to really mobilize you to get and to connect with us. And then perhaps something very important, it's not just a matter of actually moving scientists, researchers, entrepreneurs from your countries to Europe. What we want is actually to have your, your, your expertise, your, your uh, uh, human capital connecting to what we are doing in Europe in other parts of the world and get, get using you to really anchor important innovation activities also taking place in uh, the Arab countries to promote global development. Something very important, Horizon 2020 is not only about research. Research is an element of it, but there is a, a number of very important activities dealing with innovation, dealing with entrepreneurship, dealing with uh, um, uh, the business world, uh, involving startups and uh, new companies, new ventures. And in this context, international cooperation is an essential feature. We need to target not the specific problem of one country, but problems that actually address, uh, 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 activities that address global problems and have the possibility of reaching a wider population. I mean, this just shows some of the axes of our cooperation. In, in red, we have countries that are with whom we have 
some specific relationships in the form of uh, coordinated calls, but we are also targeting other countries with whom we want to develop uh, strength and strengthen our cooperation. Uh, Gulf countries are indicated, Mediterranean countries are indicated here, uh, uh, also uh, other parts of the world, but here in the context that we are talking, I would like to emphasize special, especially Gulf countries and the Mediterranean countries where there is a very strong uh, Arab presence. I mean, I'm not mentioning here Middle East because that's a very odd co uh, context or a very odd uh, con uh, concept. Actually, depending on the, which language we are talking in Europe, we have actually different words to say, uh, to, to refer to that uh, context. W you know probably that actually there are three major pillars of uh, Horizon 2020. One being excellent science, the other industrial leadership, and the third, societal challenges. These are not silos, actually. These activities link between each self very tightly. And as a matter of fact, within these areas, we see that ICT is largely present everywhere. It's in the excellent science with a number of activities. It is in industrial leadership, where we have a specific and dedicated line, but it's also in all the so-called societal challenges. Let me say something more about excellent science. Uh, my colleague will develop this uh, in greater detail. Uh, what I would like to say is that for us, this is not just a matter of actually providing the connectivity. It's a matter of going beyond the connectivity and to think about the added value activities that can be developed on the basis of this. We're talking about a knowledge society, so all the knowledge that can be shared, that can be developed, co-created through the use of uh, these research infrastructures is of paramount importance. Industrial leadership, well, we have typical areas that had been already mentioned by many speakers before me. Uh, okay, competent systems is a very uh, common area, but the next generation of computing where we talked about uh, the possibilities offer, offered by cloud, the possibilities offered by high performance computing, which is a resource that is becoming increasingly available for a larger community. And we want to use this uh, as a way of actually pushing forward the limits and the, and the, the possibilities uh, of the current technology. Future internet, which for us actually includes also 5G because you see 5G not just has a, a simple upgrade of having a little bit more capacity, but actually as a merger of what we now can know as the fixed and the mobile infrastructure, making this as a, a global and pervasive communication possibilities. Content technologies. I mean, amongst these we have on one side the important element, which is the uh, multimedia content, uh, the possibilities of using this to promote uh, the dissemination of uh, a wider forms of culture, including revisiting and reconstructing some of the aspects of the past, but also some new developments, what we call the data value economy, where we actually look at data not only as a simple manipulation of uh, numbers, but actually how to extract from that uh, smarter management of some of the realities like smart cities, like connected objects. Of course, robotics, uh, more advanced forms of interfaces, uh, and photonics. I mean, to give an example, photonics allows you to slash by probably a factor of 10 the uh, current consumption of uh, electricity for illumination. And that's actually a significant part of the current consumption of energy. Let me just also foc uh, mention very briefly two things. Internet of Things, which was already mentioned by the inspiring uh, presentation that you had uh, just before me. Connected smart objects is exactly the kind of concept that was so brilliantly presented before. Uh, Cybersecurity, a very important aspect. Uh, Human-centric digital age, this is perhaps a bit less obvious, but what we know is that nowadays, the fact that people are connected, that uh, all generations are having their own mobile phone with them, with, with which they are able to communicate any, more, any moment to almost anywhere, also changes our relationship, our social relationship with the others, and that is something that needs further uh, thinking to understand better what are the implications. Okay, uh, just a very brief mention to ICT innovation. We are talking about uh, access to innovation. We are talking about support to entrepreneurship and innovation. We are talking about disruptive innovation uh, 
perspectives. This is integral part of Horizon 2020. Let me just then jump into the so-called societal challenges. We are talking about the activities that support ICT in health. Uh, I'm presenting here a number of topics that are already part of the current activities, and uh, I'm not going into the detail of each one, but you can use this as a basis for your uh, further thinking about possibilities of working with the EU in Horizon 2020. We're talking about energy efficient buildings, uh, low carbon, uh, energy, especially adapting electricity grids to the new forms of mobility where we're going to have more and more electrical cars. Smart cities and communities, which is a holistic vision of all what can be changed uh, in making the management of cities more energy efficient and smarter. Road. Well, perhaps here it's not so obvious, but in many countries, uh, road congestion is an issue need to find ways of making these modes of transport more efficient and, and, and uh, uh, more effective. Uh, I already talked about uh, the green vehicles is another example where we are going to plug the car while you are working because in reality uh, usual displacements are of less than 10 kilometers. Climate action. We have important activities dealing with waste management and water management. Water is going to be probably uh, it's already, I think, if you compare the price of the liter of water and oil, sometimes you get the impression, you, you realize that water is even more valuable than, than, than uh, oil. But also, and interesting aspects on uh, the management of the public sector, uh, management of the government, and ICT in learning and inclusion. That's a very important topic that we had been working for quite some time, and now we think that we are in the process of actually reaching the benefits of that investment, but we need to move from the lab into the real world, engage in these academic organizations, schools, students, teachers. Let me just finish with a few words about the, the global dimension of Horizon 2020. Well, what happens is that today, the center of innovation and research is not only focused on the developed countries. Uh, we have seen that actually there is an increasing number of patents coming from developing countries. Uh, or at least not developing, but the known core, the known usual suspects. We have also seen this in terms of uh, uh, publications, the typical indicators for uh, um, research and development. Also, a very important thing is that many of the challenges that we are facing are not only at the level of a single country. They engage a whole region, a whole globe, if you're talking, for instance, of things like climate, if you're talking about things like uh, security, uh, just to quote two examples. I mean, EU remains an important actor in this area despite this, this diversification. So to some extent, by uh, engaging in a collaboration with the EU, that offers really the opportunity to connect each one of your countries and their communities to probably the most advanced economies in the world. And the access to this knowledge can really be translated into better development in more jobs for uh, the different countries and ultimately a path for peace and stability. How can this be achieved? Well, we had been thinking about on one side developing partnerships with each of the countries, but also we think that on the other side there is a good opportunity for uh, leapfrogging uh, by not having to go through the same learning steps that had been used in the past. So profit from the fast learning curve. I mean, a few suggestions on how we can move forward. We thought that actually a good approach could be to uh, find a way of developing a suitable forum to sit together, to identify which areas are most promising, then identify who will be the most relevant partners for such uh, collaboration, so mobilize the organizations in the other world that can really join such kind of activities. In this case, we think that actually identifying a certain number of uh, champions that can be act as catalysts and multipliers for such cooperation activities, we think that is really an important step. And then see how we're gonna do it. So what kind of joint activities can we envisage? This can be First, the participation in ongoing or, or, or on, on uh, projects that are being prepared, but also think about a more concrete and, and medium-term uh, action plan 
which will include necessarily some demonstration projects that can be, let's say, examples and, and uh, uh, flagships of how this uh, cooperation can translate into tangible benefits. Uh, I mean, this is very much the main points that I would like to uh, offer you as a kind of call for action. So I'll be staying here with my colleague for the next couple of days, or at least until tomorrow. I'll be willing to join you in to have some contacts on this matter. Thank you. So thank you, Carlos. Uh, as a moderator, I uh, picked up uh, some key words that I would like to emphasize in his uh, speech. One of them, uh, there is, uh, you know, they're responsible for international cooperation. International cooperation, it is to the world. And there is about 80 billion uh, euros which are available until in the Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, so this is something that we can uh, uh, yeah, make take advantage of. Uh, there is uh, areas which are very much of interest to European Commission, uh, which is about uh, innovation and building uh, human capital. Uh, it's about ICT is everywhere. ICT innovation, which is an integral part in many of the of the areas, uh, like uh, you know cloud and HPC as uh, uh, building larger communities for research and education. It's about uh, smart cities. It's about transport, environment, ICT and learning, climate, security. Uh, it's about internet of things, and uh, he's, call, he's calling for next steps like creating forums to identify uh, promising areas uh, of interest to the region, and because we are here in Oman, so their interest is in the Arab region, and to try to uh, uh, recruit some partners to join and be catalysts in the future in terms of uh, creating joint projects and joint activities. Uh, and probably by the end of uh, today and tomorrow, we are able with them to identify uh, action plans and examples where we can uh, move forward. So thank you. So, Mr. Anion. Okay. Good afternoon, His Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as it has already been said, may well be at this time of the afternoon is not the best time to listen to a presentation. In any case, a presentation with the slides. Um, but maybe I will have a few slides with the pictures, so hopefully that will keep you awake. Um, the other point maybe is um, uh, my colleague Carlos has already covered the issues or at least the pointers about the Horizon 2020, the opportunities which you have. So I'm going to expand a bit on uh, specifically Connectivity, data, computation, and cooperation may well be, I should have put innovation there. Actually, it is also there. So at the end of this one, and maybe in any case during the roundup and the, the discussions, we certainly want to have open discussion with you to try and see where is that we can work with you? Where is that your needs are taken into account? so that the cooperation does not come from vessels. The cooperation comes from your side. So that's the way how we would want to try and uh, explore the ideas. And uh, in the next few minutes, I'll try and cover on the, the points about um, this connectivity, data, computation, cooperation, and also I'll touch, up, touch upon the, the innovation part. Okay. Well, um, this may well be, it's one of those diagrams which you could see where we are looking for researchers anywhere in the world to have access, to communicate, to cooperate, to work with others. So it doesn't matter where you are, and we would need to look for the encouraging or at least providing the facilities for that. Now, some of you might have been looking at, for example, the, the Facebook CEO been going around the world trying to communicate on Every single child, well, let's say child, even the, uh, the primary school onwards, to have connectivity. Now, of course, we are focusing more on the research side. I think the, the bottom line, of course, is we need to look at that sort of global connectivity from the research point of view. Okay. Um, now, what's the approach we follow in this? 
Uh, we, of course, take a transversal cutting across disciplines, so it doesn't have to be just, a, let's say, a medicine or maybe smart cities or any of those. It could well be the cross-cutting. Cross Support for tomorrow's science. Now, open science has been mentioned a number of times this morning. Now, in a, it may well be, this is one of those key aspects which is going to encourage innovation. You know, there was a time we were talking about closed shop, closed discussions, closed research is over. Now, we need to really look at how the open science is going to create innovation. So, this is where we would be looking at enab enabling innovation through the testing innovative solutions, and that should also help uh, everything industries and SMEs. And we would certainly like to see from the Arab countries, the GCCs, where there are innovative com country, companies with whom we can also work with. Okay. Well, what's the drivers for change in this? Uh, here are some pointers. Computing power naturally. I mean, uh, we've gone from the stage where, you know, the, we simply have a minimum amount of communication or computing data. So this is a key aspect in this. Big data. Again, I come back on this a bit more. Um, this is a stage where the so-called data deluge is one of the significant aspects. And through which you would be able to create in a, in a innovative solutions. Global connections, been talked about many times. Global participation. So that's where we count on you. I mean, it is something where these days physically you can be anywhere else, but the global connection will allow you to cooperate. Um, so it's an open is pattern. Um, so we are looking for a, a cooperation with science and, and, and also for society. Okay. Well, the computing power, and if you, if you look back on number of years, probably this just gives you a little picture about how the computing power has been evolving over the last, uh, let's say, 30 years, 40 years. Now, it has been said many times, if you look at the, if you like, uh, car industries, if the, the technology evolution has been happening in the same way as it is for the, compu uh, the computation, probably you could have had a, a really fast driving car in your, in your hand. Now, so the speed in which the computational power has been increasing is enormous, as it's been shown through some of the diagrams here. Okay, um, in the same way, I mentioned the data side. The, the amount of data being created on a daily basis, hourly basis, is huge. And may well be, it's not just about the, the volume you need to be thinking about. How can you create value out of it? And that's where you're going to have innovative solutions and you'll have businesses working around it. Okay, well, uh, global connections, picture has already been shown before, so, so it simply shows, you know, the global connection is limitless, limitless in this situation. Well, it's a picture which uh, you, everybody in here has seen many times. I mean, uh, uh, the giant is well known to all of you, so I don't need to explain anything more, however, is a significant part. I would say this has been one of our success stories. I mean, you have been part of it. We want to take this further. We really want to take this further into the future. Okay. Uh, the, the number of organizations or um, the number of researchers working on it again, it's been you know, in increasing on a regular basis. 50 million users, I'm sure this probably need to be updated. Um, 10,000 institutions, you know, this is increasing on a regular basis. Well, uh, from the e-infrastructure side for the unit in which I am working on, you'll see that the infrastructure, the connectivity aspects which literally supports every other field. It may be on the uh, leading industrial side, it may be for societal challenges. So it doesn't matter which area it is, the bottom line is you need to look on think about that connectivity and also the data which is being used. Okay, the global research, virtual research community. So it probably shows you, if you can read it from them, the number of communities in which it is involved in. Could be e-science, e-health, e-learning, you name it. So it's, it's, it's actually, it's up to you to look at which